cataractcoach.com. Hyperopia on the brain. Here are some important lessons when operating on these hyperopic patients. Now, these hyperopic patients, their entire lives have had great distance vision. They tend to be latent hyperopes when they're younger. Let's just say a little bit of hyperopia, maybe a plus one, even a plus two. But of course, you're young, you have so much accommodative amplitude that you can accommodate and achieve whatever focus you need to, whether it's far or near. And so these patients go without glasses until they're somewhere in their, let's say, mid to late 40s, at which point they notice that the presbyopia kicks in and whatever little accommodation they have left, they're using their accommodation in order to get the good distance vision. Now, interestingly, in, in these, in some studies that I've seen, when they are aiming for best distance vision, so these hyperopic patients who still have good accommodation, they're not focusing, they're not a dead on plano, they're focusing at a slight degree of hyper. So this is what they're used to. They're certainly not used to being minus a half, and they may not be very happy with that. So that's the important thing on refractive targeting on these patients. So if this patient really wants best distance vision, let's say you see a patient. Now they're of cataract age, they're 60, 70 years old, and this patient wants a monofocal lens, and the patient wants best distance vision. Patient now is wearing plus two hyperopia correction for distance, and is pretty happy, and obviously never wore any glasses until the age of 45, and then they started wearing readers, you know, the, the routine. And then by 55 or 60, wearing distance glasses as well. So what do you aim here? And my answer to you is, don't aim minus a half. I've had patients where we've done surgery, and you think minus half is a blessing. It is if, it's that, if that's what your brain wants. But if your brain likes hyperopia and you're used to that, you like what you like. For someone who's myopic, they'd be much happier at minus a half than plus a half. But someone like this who's been hyperopic for the entirety of life may actually prefer, prefer to be plus a half. And so that's an important lesson. So refractive targeting is one lesson. Now, another important lesson is what about the patients who are highly hyperopic? You see the patient, and you see that eye will power is like 28 or 30 diopters, and these patients are like, wear, come into your clinic wearing plus five or six hyperopic spectacles for distance vision. So let's say they're plus six for distance and plus eight for reading. So really up there. Well, keep into account what happens when you wear spectacles of that much magnification. Let's think about it. But first, let me tell you about cataractcoach.com, the podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. It's everywhere where you find a podcast. You got to check it out. Plus, of course, I've got so much more great material on our website, the free book, the free curriculum. It's all free. Just go check it out. Now, with the plus six distance glass, that patient is used to image magnification. Think about it. The image size increase with the spectacles. Right? If you put that patient in contacts, plus six contacts, they'll still see sharp, but they won't have that magnification of the image. So when you operate on a highly hyperopic patient, you got to tell them, hey, when I do your eyeball surgery and I put in that 28 diopter lens and you end up post-op plus a quarter, which sounds amazing, you will lose the magnification effect. And the way I explain to patients is you'll actually see things the correct size, the way they actually are. Your glasses today make things look overly magnified, which is actually wrong. And so you just have to tell them in advance. So you'll have to, you know, give it a little bit of time, get used to that. And I think you'll be pretty happy. And so these patients, by and large, are very happy. I mean, one of the most amazing things, you get a patient like this who's highly hyperopic, and you make them plano or plus a quart, even plus a half, they will love you. And so it's really important for these cases, you know, Plan it out refractively to be very accurate. They can remember, they have hyperopia on the brain. The same way that myopic patients have myopia on the brain. And then don't get me started about astigmatic patients. If you ever see a patient who comes to your clinic and their refraction is plus one, plus one minus two, at 180, let's say, well, okay, that's a circle of Plano. When the patient, you know, you could put in a monofocal lens that's toric, you could make them Plano. But what if they come to your clinic Plano minus two at 180. Now what? Think about it. There are two focal points. Plano's one and the other is minus two. So these patients often go around all day without glasses. And you think, how can you walk around two doctors of uncorrected astigmatism? Because they have astigmatism on the brain. That's what they like. So again, patients like what they like. And you're not going to change them magically. 
So give them the, the, the refractive outcome that's going to make them the happiest. So what do you do with that one patient? Well, you could put in, let's say, the Plano minus 2 at 180. You could put in a lens with a larger range, extended up the focus lens, trifocal lens, and then aim for Plano, and they'll be very happy. But if you put a monofocal lens in, you better discuss it with them ahead of time to figure out what they're used to. Are you going to trade better image quality for a shallower depth of field or depth of focus? Because they may not want that. And we're going back to our case here. As you can tell, it's just a routine case. And this patient is very hyperopic. A little LRI at the end here. That goes exactly opposite the main incision. That's going to help me address about a half diopter of astigmatism. And the patient has a beautiful outcome here. And this patient went from being a plus four hypro post -op, uh, pre op to a post op outcome of plus a quarter and absolutely loved it. Awesomeness. Hey, check out our podcast. Again, the best podcast in all of ophthalmology. You'll find it anywhere where you find your podcast services. Plus, follow me on social media.